And for more details on the latest decision, we're bringing in our Sandra Sanchez and far on the latest. And Sandra, I have the first question. You've been covering this story from the beginning and have been talking to lawmakers who are being impacted by this decision. How are they reacting? Hi, Jeremiah. Uh, all the border lawmakers that I have spoken with are ecstatic about the decision. They said that the resources just were not in place to lift Title 42 on Monday, which the Biden administration wanted to do. Um, in a statement, Governor Greg Abbott said this is proof that the president has an open borders policy and that he will continue to have uh, his state troopers as well as National Guardsmen posted along the border, something I saw very aggressive in Eagle Pass the past two days. Congressman Vicente Gonzalez said that the border communities need to feel better about this and that if more resources were in place, that this would ease their concerns because the pandemic is not over. Something that State Representative Terry Canales, a Democrat from Edinburgh, echoed several times. He, he said that the COVID pandemic was very personal to him. Someone who's actually contracted and suffered COVID severely, I would tell you that we owe it to the American people to protect the American people. Right. Um, and so to, I just returned from Eagle Pass in which I saw many uh, Border Patrol as well as National Guardsmen uh, along the banks of the Rio Grande. And, and on the way there, I passed through Rio Bravo, Texas, where they have just erected one of the tent facilities. And um, there are supposed to be eight of them along the border. There's another one built up in Eagle Pass. But the problem is that they just don't have all eight that are already operational and they just cannot handle the surge, I've been told. And Jeremiah? Sandra, I have a next question. Some people say today's ruling could be a delay tactic. Could Title 42 be lifted successfully in the future? It could. Um, this is just a, an injunction issued by the court. It could be lifted at any time. But, you know, if they get these one-stop shop facilities where they're supposed to be able to handle 1,500 migrants and they're supposed to have several federal agencies all together, we're talking about CBP and Border Patrol officers, Health and Human Services for Children, legal services, medical teams, um, a place where migrants can be screened for COVID. Also, some lawmakers are saying, what about more aggressive medical screenings to ensure that those who are here uh, are not carrying the virus? These are all uh, solutions that could help to ease some of the concerns. All right, Sandra, my last question. If Title 42 is lifted at a later date, what are other immigration laws that will kick in because of it? And what are the differences between those and Title 42? Right. Title 42 is a public health law that was implemented in March 2020 under the Trump administration by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. And it allows DHS to immediately expel migrants back over, often in less than two hours. Title VIII is the longstanding immigration law, which would kick in if Title 42 is lifted. But the difference is, under Title VIII, all migrants are, do, are processed with, uh, they're asked a credible fear interview. They are asked, um, medical. they're given medical screening. Um, they are given access to advocates. And, and there's a lot more care which migrant advocates say that they need, but it takes days. And that's where communities are concerned. These people will be inside U.S. borders for longer periods of time. Um, I've been told by lawmakers that about 85% of those who do come, especially single adults, do not meet the level of uh, need uh, for claiming asylum in the United States. There's a certain bar. And, and so all of this will take a lot more time and a lot more resources. All right. Thank you so Back much, Sandra, you. for your insight.